Hello James Hi. Alexandru <laughs> and hello Miles Richardson. Hello Will. How are you both? That's a good question. Now good question. we've had two days off, so we're feeling probably uh, perkier. Perky, like over rested. I, I feel a little bit need to get yes, a, we have, gears we have, going. Yeah, we, it's the first time we've had any time off in the show properly, and we'll, it could be very interesting. We do the show this evening to see if we suddenly fall over oh, ourselves. Oh, yeah, don't start all that. yeah. 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 Don't tonight. but yeah. But you're feeling revitalised. Revitalised, yes. And two shows on a Saturday uh, is rather exhausting. Both of it's yeah. been pretty. It's been pretty intense, hasn't it, up until now? Yeah, you know, yeah. Not the, the, the tech work, the tech week, watch. which has been. It's quite a technical show. Mm. It's been quite, and quite a physical show for us as well, both of us. And so it's been pretty exhausting. So yeah. these two days were, were welcome. They came at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just going to speak to you separately, so each. So okay. do, we do right. So uh, sure. we'll go with James first. So you're not allowed to talk. Feel right? <laughs> <laughs> free to speak. <laughs> Um, you are perhaps best known as being Martin Fowler in EastEnders mm -hmm. uh, from 1996 to 2006. Nice research. Good. <laughs> Which is a long time. <laughs> a long time. Um, so why did you audition for it? Because you, you hadn't really done any TV before that. Well, I was 11 years old, so um, um, I was just messing around really, you know. I kind of was involved in lots of kind of after school clubs and stuff, one of them being a drama class at quite a well-known place called, it was then called Anna Sheerner Theatre, which is yeah. kind of the, the place to go for kind of working class or lower middle class kids who liked acting. And mm -hmm. um, so it was just, we were just having fun. And so it wasn't, I wish I could say at that young age I was that career minded, but I wasn't, it was just something I was sort of up to. And um, I had no idea I was even auditioning for it when I did, because we had visiting casting directors to come watch our classes and had the opportunity to then go and do a recall audition. Um, and of course, I was like, yeah, great, you know, you're 11 years old, why, you know, why not? So that, that was, that's, that's that story in a nutshell, really. So you were very lucky, really, because oh, I, yeah, I'm I mean, sure there were other, a lot of other sort of kids there that were very... They were all rubbish, terrible. <laughs> by far the best, but um, no, I mean, I'm sure Miles can attest to this as well. I mean, this, this job is probably about 95% luck, 5% mm -hmm. what you can do. Um, so, yeah, I think the trick is once you get your foot in the door to exploit that 5% of skill or talent or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, you know. So, so um, what, what did it feel like when you got the role? What, what was it like? I mean, what, were, were you kind of elated? Because you say, I mean, you'd never well, really was, done anything like it before. So. I, got, I got the, I, it was the last day of primary school and we were all kind of running around drawing on each other with felt tip pens and mm. probably throwing, I don't know, egg and flour, I don't know, whatever you did, whatever it is. <laughs> and um, I got called into the master's office, so I thought, oh no, I'm in, I've done something bad. You know, um, I walked in, my mum was there kind of tearful, and I was like, something really bad. Oh no. She said, you've got the job in these tendons. <laughs> so, um, I just remember being more excited about going back to the playground and sort of throwing stuff at other kids. but. Uh, <laughs> You know, and then I started the job on the first day of secondary school. Actually, that was my first day on uh, at work at on EastEnders. So it was it was a kind of um, I don't know I don't know what, what it's like for you to remember when you was eleven, but they're kind mm -hmm. of like halcyon days, really, aren't they? When you're dead, you know, sort of. Especially when you're a child, actually, I was as well. Because yeah. they, uh, actors love to spoil kids, so it's it's, yeah. it's like you're the centre of attention. Not only that, because you're an actor, but you're the centre of the actors' attention as well. They really spoil your rotten. So. Yeah. You feel very special. You do, yeah. It was just I just remember being one big game and quite exciting and fun until puberty hit. <laughs> 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 and then, then I'm then I'm spotty and getting puppy fat on television. And I didn't enjoy that so much. But, yeah. but what what was it like? Because you you had a, like a job, a, a, so you, so not so easily, but kind of like. Just like that, like yeah. Um, in, so, so what was that like? Because there's a lot of things these days, like, oh, you know, you get, get, finish school, get a job. It's like, well, well, you know, I'm, came into. I'm extremely lucky in that way that I found myself in a profession at a young age, which luckily I only realised when I was about 15 or 16 that I actually wanted to do. Up until that stage, you're kind of instinctually just, like I say, messing around, having fun, and just going, you know, mm. this is drama and it's fun. I enjoy this. Around 15, 16, I was like, oh, actually, I want to take this seriously. So I was very, very, very lucky in that respect. Um, but it was, you know, it, it's, um, I, it's, 
it wasn't all, you know, it's not just fun and glamour and fame. And, you know, I, had to go, I went to school, I went to normal mm. secondary school in East London and everything that comes with that with being on the telly and balancing those two things, academia and, and, and being an actor and, and being in quite a famous show as well and that was quite the, all the sort of stuff you can imagine that might come with that. Um, but uh, it was o overly a positive thing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then you left yeah. uh, 10 years later. Yeah. Um, now, I've, I've, I did a bit of reading and it said that you said that you left because you kind of wanted to explore other mm -hmm. ventures of your uh, industry. Yes. Um, has that has that happened? T ten years on from that. Uh, um, um, well, I'm still I'm still on that journey, I think. But yes, in short, yes. The short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, the long answer is um, I got to sort of nineteen twenty and made my decision. I wanted to leave when I was twenty one, just because it was a nice round number at ten years, um, and it felt like a graduation of sorts. And um, I, there was a lot more to learn, and uh, there was a. Um, I sort of was very good at being on a soap, but that's not necessarily very good at being an actor. So mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a lot more to learn. A lot, there was a lot more to this thing, you know. Um, so I'm still doing. I'm still learning. I'm still expanding. I think. Um, so yeah, I'm just to be continued. I suppose. We look forward to it. Oh, she is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and do you, do you uh, do you still watch EastEnders at all? Do you watch the new Martin Fowler? Um, what, I've, di what? I've dipped in here and there. Yeah, yeah just to make sure he's doing. It. <laughs> his name's James as well, isn't I know, it? James <laughs> Byer. Yeah, um, just to, I've got his. We've never met, but I've got his number, and I sent him a few messages when he got got the part. Just saying, don't mess this up. <laughs> Um, I actually didn't tell him who it was at first, but because he, I knew who got cast, and. Is that a friend of mine passed his number on, but he wasn't allowed to, no announcement had been made yet, so I started texting him saying, you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't mess on you around. You know, <laughs> who is this? How do you know? And eventually, all right, it's James Alexandre, good luck. I'm sure we'll do it, blah, blah. So, yeah, I do, I've dipped into it, but I don't, I, I'd, I'd be lying if I say I'm a watcher. I'm not. My mm. parents are, they love it. They're mm. sort of so bad. So, I, I, when, when I'm around their house, I, I, I tend to watch it for a few minutes. But it's odd, it's a weird. It's like, you know, I've seen all your mates. Yeah, fun. yeah. Oh, there anymore, so. oh. Oh, yeah. oh, thanks for that. Please don't. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on to Miles now. I thought you never would. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Miles, you had, uh, as you said earlier, you had a similar sort of. Yes. Not, I mean, not in sort of soaps and stuff, but. Um, no, it was a very different sort of uh, child acting than being stage. Um, yeah, it was always very sort of serious shape well, serious. I wouldn't call it serious. I mean, in the midst of that stream, the Love's Ever Lost are meant to be comedies. So, uh, right, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I, but I didn't know who Judy Dench or Helen Mirren was, mm. or David Warner, or all those other people I was working with. They were just sort of nice adults who were spoiling me rotten, you know. And, uh, um, but so, yes, but uh, it was a different discipline altogether. Um, and uh, uh, when I started doing film and television, um, I had to almost unlearn everything I'd learned as an actor mm. because, of course, it's a completely different discipline. Uh, so, um, so I, I, I'm very confident now on film and television, but it's, it took me some time to get that way. And so, how, so you, so when because you had a very theatrical family as well, didn't you? Uh, you know, your father was a, a Shakespearean actor, yeah. and so, so was that kind of like was it easier maybe to, than than James to sort of make your way into that? Well, uh, I think the the easiness of it is not down to necessarily that I had any. Um, uh, I was bought pushed further than James was, but I think the easiness was that I was observing acting from a very young okay. age, yeah. and so I learnt a lot of craft work just by observation. So I had a head start, and specifically with Shakespeare, because I was watching Shakespeare from the age of three, and to me it's never been a foreign language. Mm. It's always been very understandable. And that is an advantage. I mean, I know so many actors who come to Shakespeare through school, mm. which is a terrible way to approach it. It's not mm. designed to be read, it's designed to be seen, mm. or as the Shakespeareans would say, heard. It's, it's where they, we heard, we'd see, hear a play, not see a play back in Elizabethan times. So that was always an advantage. Um, okay, so so did you ever look back after that? So so did you ever kind of think that maybe it was it was a hobby? Or I mean, because you say you've 
you, you sort of studied it for, was it kind of a, another way of life? Because you say it's not a different language at all. When did you realise you wanted to be an actor, I suppose? Isn't it? <sighs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're kind of, surrounded by it, and then there comes that moment, you go, actually, I'll there was, sort of there was an inevitability. I have two teenage boys, and they're, one's 18 and a half, one's uh, 16 and a half. They still have no idea what they want to do with mm. life. I knew what I wanted to do with life at the age of 13. Mm. And I, I geared myself up to that. And I've been doing it professionally now as an adult for 33 um, years. Yeah, 33 years. So it's, it's a <laughs> long haul. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to go back to my earliest credits, it's, it's um, more like 50 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, so, so you mentioned earlier about the difference between theatre and then film and TV. So, so theatre and screen. Yeah. So what, what is the difference? How well, there, 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 are, there, are, there are huge differences. The first difference is on stage you get an immediate reaction mm -hmm. from an audience. You, you don't get that on film, you have to wait months. The other difference is the, the, the suspension of disbelief, not only from, your, it has to come from you, because you're walking along talking to somebody and you're often walking over the tracks which the camera's on, so you're walking over a train track, which mm -hmm. is not supposed to be there. And sometimes when you're talking to somebody, you're not actually talking to them, you're talking to a spot nearest the camera, and they're off feeding the lines to you. So I'm talking to you, but I'm not. I'm talking to you. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a it's a it's a bag of much more different tricks. Acting is a bag of tricks, mm. um, but with film, and television, the, the the tricks are different, mm. and and um, and then you have to get used to that. Um, but also, you, you you tell the story in odd orders. You can do a shot where the first thing you do on the set is you get killed. Yeah. And then the next thing you do is you do the scene that happens for yeah, three yeah. months before that. Of course. Um, so, uh, James, you can come into this as well, actually, um, because you've done a fair bit of, of Shakespeare and you've been in sort of painter plays sure. as well. Uh, what's your favourite? If you, if, is there a favourite? Uh, is it like picking between two of each other? Well, yeah, I mean, for, sort of to adapt to what Miles was saying, I think there is a, they're completely different in one sense, and I kind of think. Because there's the craft, like you say, you know, hit your mark, and this, that, and the other, and all that. But in another sense, they're almost the same. They're the same gig as well. Because I, I got some kind of think of it as how, how big is your stage. Mm -hmm. So if we're intimate, we're you know we've got a camera here. That's how big our stage is. Whereas if you're here at the um, Playhouse, your stage is that big. You know? yeah, so it's yeah. a difference. That's the way I kind of like to think about it. If because you always, because always it, ask the cameraman, where, where am I? Where am I? Yeah, you always go, well, where, where? And then mm -hmm. they will go like that, and then you go, okay, so you then pull your, your performance out. Because even, even within theatre, you might be in a small studio space, yeah. which is then a completely different skill to being on stage at the Globe. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't, you know, so it's, um, you know, it, they are massively different. But so to answer your question more directly, you just you just ask, I kind of don't, I don't just, Differentiate and distinguish between the two. I think I sort of it's acting to me. And yeah, they all complement each other, and you can learn. They what you learn from theatre definitely cross over to the film, TV, and the other way. I think it's a difference between um, uh, riding a horse and riding a bicycle. Basically, they're modes of transport, right. but they're very sure. very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. completely. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but if you fall off either, it's gone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sleuth then. You're yeah. in Sleuth at the moment at the Nottingham Playhouse. Um, what, what's, what's the play? Tell, we can't tell you. It's, just, it's a who done it. If we tell you anything, okay. we'll, 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 we'll tell you something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, it's a yeah. It's a who done it. It's a bit of a thriller. There's um, lots of lots of twists and turns, which we can't say anything about because okay. it would spoil the whole thing. Yeah. I think the best thing that's been said about it from an absolute mm. perspective was the, the James who runs the. Not this James. James, who runs the West Yorkshire Playhouse, where we're going to after this, said the first half is a conventional thriller, but the second half becomes like a pinterbread play. Well, and and, it's, and it's, it's true. It suddenly becomes a very different, darker. I mean, obviously not dark anyway. Thrillers always are, mm. but it becomes more of a psychological mm. drama than the second half. Okay. That's what that's what lifts it up from the normal run of the mill, mill slasher plays. <laughs> so to give you a little bit of plot if you want, my character, so I play Miles, um, Milo, Milo. <laughs> I was going to say what I I never, I never, I never cast you Every day. Day. No, I don't think I've ever called you Milo, no, no, yeah. I, I do call my character Milo, so Milo, Milo, Milo. It's because that director's called Giles, we've got Giles and Miles, Milo. Milo. Yeah, I'm not very clever. We call, call, call him Niles. Niles. Yeah. <laughs> so my, Milo Tyndall is my character, and he plays Andrew White, and so my character is been having um, a long, I would say, long sort of affair with his wife. 
And so in the first few minutes, well, I don't think it's anything given away anything, yeah. in the first few minutes of the play, we discover that um, I'm here to, well, he, uh, he asks me if I want to marry his wife, if that's true, and I say yes with your permission. So that kind of gives you, that's the kicking off, okay. the plot of, of the thing. But it goes so left field from there. Right. That, um, we can comment. No, any it, it's, uh, it's very witty, um, because my character is a writer of uh, detective fiction. He has a way with words, and, and uh, um, I think you, you know, your character comes more into its head in the second half. Mm. Um, it's actually a question of, of pushing the play. I drive the first half, and mm. your character drives the second. Okay. And so actually I find the second half, even though you're a lot more running around, <laughs> much easier because I'm being pushed by the other character. Whereas I do most of the pushing in the first half. So and it kind of if you if you if you're aware of, of those sort of classic detective who done it for you know the um um oh blimey, what's her name? Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that if you just if you took Agatha Christie, yeah, yeah. That this is kind of taking her form and having lots of fun with it, you know, and twisting and turning it and, and the convention. It's like from dusk till dawn when suddenly you've got a, 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 yeah, a, exactly. a, a caper and then suddenly it's from that part of it and you think, what the hell? It completely sort of switches on its head, you know. Or have you ever seen, um, this is a bit more obscure reference, but it's one of the my, but do you know, um, do you know the director Michael Haneke, who made a film called Funny Games, which took, again took the thriller genre and turned it on its head. So if you think if you know it, if you, can, if you have those in your mind, you'll get a sense of what Sleuth is, is doing, you know. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's, it sounds like a, just a, a whole Christmas wrapped into one present. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, much, that's a very sweet word. <laughs> we, we also have the most spectacular set, which, mm, yeah, yeah. which is not, you know, most, most um, acting editions have a basic set design, which will sort of facilitate you to follow because it's got all the right props and things you need. This is sort of thrown out the window. We built this whole new, I mean the set itself is part and parcel. It's a star in itself really. It's a mm -hmm. fantastic set. It's pretty impressive. Um, it revolves, it's got big wow. stairways. And yeah, so it's, really, yeah. it's really very impressive. It's what, a whole, the whole story in itself. And mm -hmm. um, what, what was it that drew you to it? Just the play itself? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Um, uh, well for me, um, I, <laughs> I was, as a boy, uh, I was stuck in Canada in the middle of a heat wave in the summer with about 95% humidity and it was uh, about 45 degrees in the shade. Uh, but the local cinema was air conditioned mm. and they were playing sleuth. So I sat, when we used to go to the cinema basically doing the, the heat of the day, just watch sleuth. <laughs> I watched it for a whole week, I must have watched it about 20 times. And you know, when Giles said, Do you want to come and see it about the sleuth? I said, Of course I want to go see it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was part of my, became part and parcel of my. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Mm. I, I worked with Giles, the director, and here at Nottingham Playhouse about seven or eight years ago. Uh -huh. um, when I was kind of just leaving these centres, actually, the first couple of years of leaving that. Um, so it felt like my first, it, the, the job I did seven or eight years ago was like my first adult theatre yeah. leading job, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So um, Giles was, was the short answer, he's why I got interested. And then reading the play, I was like, oh, this is very good, isn't it? You know, so that was it, it was no brainer from there. Well, James Alexander and Miles Richardson, yeah, it's been a journey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right.